Dang. Dang, look at this corn. Where'd that come from? Morning. It's a steamy one out here. Still blowing the moisture out of the corn. All right, I spent a few minutes getting some fertilizer stuff lined up. Typically in our uh, operation, we will only spread fertilizer um, on fields that are going to wheat. We put a wheat starter fertilizer down dry or fields that will be planted to corn the following year. And we try and put enough fertilizer on ahead of the corn crop to then supply the bean crop the following year uh, as well so that we're not fertilizing every single year. Um, but with the chicken litter that we have been using on our wheat stubble on a lot of acres, there's not quite enough uh, potassium in that to carry the bean crop the following year. So we're lining up some uh, potash to put a little extra potassium out there uh, for next year's bean crop on some of these fields that are corn stalks uh, and we'll go to beans next year. Uh, we also have one farm that we shelled the other day that looks like it's going to go back to corn next year. Uh, we're going to do corn on corn and that's simply a rotational thing trying to even their acres back up a little bit. We were heavy corn acres this year and that was a result of all the prevent plant ground that we had a year ago. And so in order to get back to somewhat even, uh, we need to do a little bit of corn on corn. So we're gonna put the fertilizer on that field like we would for a normal corn crop. So uh, lining a little bit of that stuff up and we're trying to balance how much do we wanna spend cost-wise versus how badly do we need the fertilizer and all that stuff. So um, we got some of it lined up now and we're gonna wait till after the first of the month and see where we're at with some other stuff before we decide on the rest of it. Anyway. Uh, right now, we need to go check our big bin. So, Phil is drying, uh, or hauling dry corn out. So we are drying into our overhead right now to refill that so that there's still corn up there if he can get a chance to haul some loads like he is right now. Which means that we're not running any corn into the big bin right now, which means the dust should have settled enough that we can go in there and see how it's filling. So we're gonna go and do that and uh, take a look at things. Up, up, up. Dusty up here. Whoa. All right, well, we've made it down in here. Um, we got a nice pile in the center, that looks good. However, we're pretty high right there. Come on, dust. And pretty low way over there. Ah, the dust particles flying in the air and the camera wants to focus on them. All right, so oh, you can see our uh, temperature cables here. Those cables have sensors on them that sense the temperature and uh, they tell us basically if there's any hot spots in the corn, so it uh, just kind of helps manage it. But here you can see where we're at right there. That's the high spot and it drops off one, two rings there. It's two rings lower. That's a problem. So we gotta adjust our spreader. It's it's really not too bad over here, just a half a ring or so. And then all of a sudden, boom, it drops way off. So uh, we gotta get more corn pushed over that way. Uh, all of these things on the side here, those are for the side draw, they're kind of baffles. Remember I showed you that yesterday where it'll gravity feed outside the side of the bin there. So that's to the north and uh, yeah. All right, so we gotta make some adjustments. Okay, back up the ladder we go. So from the high spot right there, I counted we have nine more rings, uh, 16 ring bin. That means that we have uh, seven, seven rings full of corn in here on the high spot and then uh, it'd be five on the low spot. So a uh, third of the way full-ish, something like that. Ways to go yet, this is a big bin. Okay, so we're here up at the top of the bin. You can see we got this nice platform to work off of up here, um, but there's not really a lid, so it's a little bit difficult to get down in here. They give us these access holes. All right, so the low spot is that direction. The high spot is that direction. And if I look in here, Phil's got this little added panel thing to help uh, direct the flow in there we're gonna move this over here to where the high spot is to 
try and force the grain back to the north side. So that should help funnel it over there to where we need it to go. I think part of our problem and why we get so unlevel with these is that these spreaders are rated for the capacity of the grain leg like 6,000 bushel an hour. Maybe not quite the capacity, it runs 8,000, but they're rated for much higher capacity than what our dryer puts out. And since we're always running at a real low pace coming out of the dryer, it doesn't do a very good job of leveling. It still spreads it pretty decent, but it just gets uneven. So we're gonna try that. We'll run it for another couple of days, see if it evens up. All right, back down we go. I got dirty, I got real dirty. So I'm just sitting here watching stuff. We do have another uh, flag that's ripped on that bin there, but uh, Bill is back and uh, he's gonna load up the other truck. He took the Columbia in with the first load and stopped and got fuel for it. He's gonna take the Cascadia, take a load in, get fuel for that one. So we'll be good to go for a while. And uh, we're gonna let her dry because we still got two lights on, so it's not holding us up. Loading them up. I can fill it faster with the grain cart. Just gravity feeding right out of the overhead bin. Still better than filling with an auger though. Good. Our second light went out. That's good. Getting closer. When Phil gets back, it's time to go shell. Don't want to run out. Yeah, Dad made it back from Berkey with the desk. That's good. All right, well, I just uh, dropped Dad off here at the tractor. He's gonna go chisel, and we're gonna go show. It sure is dusty when you first start this thing up. Goodness. There's clearing up a little bit. Okay, let's shell corn. We got 11 acres to do in this field, and then we're gonna jump into the Next one just down the road, it's 95 acres. If we can get uh, around 80 done today, I'd be happy. Well, this is kind of cool. I'm loading on the go, combine grain cart, and right, focus. Over there's Dad doing some chiseling. All three of us working in the same spot. It's kind of fun. It's a shame the corn's so crappy, but what are you gonna do? So who's gonna get done first here? Him or me? I've got more of the field to do, but I've already got the endros done. Racing the tillage now. I think I'm going to win. He's doing endros, but I think I'm going to win. I've only got, it says an acre and a half. But he's got the ends along the road, and he's got the ends along here to do yet, so, yeah. I'm done. All right, well, here's where we're gonna go. We've got that field to do and this field, all of this field. And uh, I don't expect this to be great corn. I'll talk some more about this field in uh, uh, a minute here, but we'll get started. Well, I'm dodging around some electric poles here, trying to get this field opened up. There's Dad, he got done with his field, so he's moving across the road now too. Well, I had been making two rounds just fine, but no more. So we'll pull out just short and go dump up here. That's a good thing. It means the corn's getting better. All right, so I said I would tell you a little bit about this field, a couple of notes on it. Um, if you've watched my videos and you watched them this spring, there's a couple things you may remember from this field. One, right here in front of us is where we found that deer skeleton. Um, it's gone now, somebody came and got that way back in the spring. There was also a big gully washout kinda right in here somewhere. Most of it got filled in. Uh, Dad brought our pan down here and filled it in, which is why I'm able to drive across it, but my rows are all everywhere. Good luck finding them kind of thing. And 
and uh, yeah, look at that. Where's the rose? Where's the rose? Right there. Yeah, so uh, I'll show you the map of this field here. It looks like that. The corn is getting better. Uh, these purple ridges over here, those are kind of some gravel veins that get super dry anytime we have a drought, but uh, there is some decent ground out here and the corn's getting better. There is a lot of replant in this field. Uh, we run the rows north and south over here and they go east and west over this way. This is one of them fields that's got a bunch of the muck holes in it. Uh, that triangle piece up there is, is pretty light, fluffy, muck, really black dirt, but kind of hard to farm sometimes. Um, and, and most of these east-west rows over there that we'll get to once we're done over here uh, was stuff that we had done uh, anhydrous with that John Deere 2510 anhydrous bar on. That was where the ground was so hard that I was floating up and I was having trouble getting it in the ground. Uh, yeah, so that's this field. Well, I'm not sure what's going on, but the corn is getting drastically better. Look how much greener that is there. That round average is 190. My field average is only like 155. What's up, Jack? Uh, Jack came up and uh, has been working on that farm all again. He said he got the number three piston out of the engine block. So we'll have to check that out when we get back to the farm. Um, but couldn't get the other ones to move just yet. So he was going to make up some kind of a, a puller plate to push them. And if we could just get it to move, then it'll break it loose and we can get them out. But uh, that's awesome. We're making progress on that tractor. All right. Well, I got this area of the field done. I gotta jump across over back behind the woods there, but I am gonna go dump what I've got on the combine into the grain cart there, and we'll have to get the cart moved over and dump off the side road over there instead of down here. All right, well, we're working some end rows along this ditch over here. This is some of the best muck soil in this farm. It kind of, there's a little ridge here, and then we drop off again, and it was really wet, but it grows some really good corn too. Now we're just coming into it. That number is going to climb. And uh, yeah, this field has got lots of up and down, up and down. It's going to be as variable as any field that we've been in so far. And yeah. Well, we've got some stellar corn out here. Uh, yeah. Highly variable, like I said. This is a pretty tough clay ridge that. This is the replant corn that didn't even grow. Needs some work here. Needs some tile is what it needs. But, you know, 30 bushel of the acre. That'll get it done, right? So another thing you may remember about this field, uh, if you watched the spring, um, we had a little bit of tile put into it after the corn was planted. Uh, I think it was there when we side dressed, or maybe they were working on it when we side dressed. And so, now we've got to be real careful because there are tile lines right there that are awfully rough and we've got to kind of not uh, gouge our snout into them and go slow and bounce across them but it's okay we'll get them worked down after harvest here and uh, they will help this farm tremendously in the long run it was worth it all right so i opened up these end rows along the lane uh here you gonna see my crappy yield map <laughs> Look how bad that's gotten. Ouch! Anyway, we're doing these endros back along here. We're going to work off uh, that lane right there. So Phil is bringing the grain cart down here and going to park it, and we'll run trucks uh, up and down this lane right now. So uh, he's still got pickup back there, but that was dead. Uh, he's going to pick Phil up and take him back to the truck that's on the other end of the field down there. Yeah, ouch. Look at that. That whole area was just awful, and there's going to be a bunch of it up here too, but it should get better down in here, and this stuff should be good, so, cool. Well, we're finding more tile lines out here, and uh, we got to make real sure we don't bend up a snout, and then we go bouncing over them. It is uh, better to just leave a little bit of corn that can damage and break stuff here, so... Yeah, and then we're through. This corn's still not very good. It's getting better, uh, but the stand is so thin as I climb up this hill here, and it's just it's just really tough dirt up here. Clay knob that's it's 
just not very good. Dang. Dang, look at this corn. Where'd that come from? Now we're getting into some of that low muck pocket that, uh, that's really good corn. In fact, I gotta slow down. You're sucking up all my power here. Let it get through the combine and the yield monitor spikes up a little bit. Yeah, there it goes. Uh, if only we had more of that and less of that. Okay, Phil just came back with another truck. The grain cart is full, so we have enough to fill that truck. And I'm tired. It's 9 o'clock. We've done 66 acres in this field on top of the 11 or 12 that we did in the other field, which means we've done over 75 acres today. There are less than 30 acres to go in this field, and there are about 32 in that other little field that's across the road back behind us, uh, which means we only have about 60, 61, 62 at the most tomorrow to finish all this right here. And I highly doubt we will move after we get that done, although it's possible. So we're quitting for the night. Park the combine. Fold up the grain tank covers and wash those windows. And uh, we'll go at it tomorrow. The wet bin is not quite full. Phil said that there was uh, the orange light just came on or the yellow light. So we probably could shell a few more loads yet if we really wanted to, but we don't. It's 9 o'clock on a Friday. I want to go home. Just getting back to the farm, checking our propane tank. We're down to 30%. All right. So dad called our propane guy today and told him, hey, we're under 40%, get a load. And he said, it'll be Monday. Monday. It's Friday. That ain't gonna last. All right, guys, so here's what I know. Um, our propane tank is getting low. We've got propane coming, but it's not coming until Monday. Uh, we may try and get a company to bring us a straight truck load tomorrow if we can and can that would help us get at least done drying the corn from where we're combining now um, there's also a chance of rain on sunday and we're kind of contemplating just taking the day off because if it's going to rain and it, 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 we kind of need a break so we may take sunday off and not do anything um but we'll see. And if we're out of propane, that makes it a little easier to decide that because it doesn't, doesn't matter if we shell on Sunday if we can't dry it. Um, but anyway, uh, we're getting closer to being done. We are we crossed a thousand acres done mark here today, and uh, we're down under 500 to go. So uh, that is a good thing. And you guys should start getting excited because on Monday, I can almost assure you on Monday, we will be moving up to our irrigated field. So next week, uh, probably spend most of the week up there because let's be honest, there's gonna be a lot of bushels. It's gonna take us a long time to shell that corn. But uh, that's the plan is we'll get up there and we probably won't finish corn totally next week, but we'll be getting awfully close by the end of the week. So um, quick update on something else here. Like I said, Jack was up today. There's our crankshaft and check it out. We got a piston out. The liner's a little, a little rusty, but doesn't look too bad. Piston doesn't look too bad. I'm sure we're gonna need some parts, but uh, yeah, that's that's promising. That's promising. So cool. He said he tried to get get these two to move, and they would not. So uh, he sprayed them down with some. Uh, blaster stuff and he was going to build a press that we could like bolt onto these and then screw it down and try and push them down that way a little bit once we get them to break loose and then they should come out the top pretty easily so anyway looks good it's coming along i told you he's going to have this thing running by the time i get the combine in here after harvest so that's good we'll let him keep working on it but anyway I gotta come back, check the dryer again in the middle of the night. Same operating procedure we've been doing all week, uh, which I'm getting tired of, but it's what it is right now, so we're gonna keep doing it, because we gotta get this corn done and keep the dryer moving. So uh, have 
a great night, everybody. Um, I hope y'all saw I wore my Sparty shirt today. Al, that one's for you. Uh, go green. By the time you're watching this, well, you see it before. They've got a big game at noon tomorrow. Uh, I'm not uh, real liking their chances, but go green. Uh, tomorrow I will have my red on because they have a big game tomorrow night. So we'll worry about that one tomorrow. But uh, anyway, have a great night, everybody. Hit that like and subscribe button. And uh, questions, comments, leave them down below. See you tomorrow. Boo. Oh, yeah. Happy Halloween, everybody. <laughs>